Hello and welcome to another episode of Hello America's What's Cooking, which you can find here on LinkedIn Live every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. My name is Senia Pola. I'm the Regional Director for ECA North America, and I will be your host today. And I'm so delighted to have our guest today, uh, Gregory Yap from Singapore. Hello, Gregory. Hi, Senja. Thank you so much for having me. We are delighted to, to have you, and, and you are just uh, freshly moved to, to this side of the pond as well. <laughs> but before we get started, would you be able to just quickly introduce yourself and your organization? Sure. Uh, so I'm Gregory Yap, uh, VP for the Singapore CBB in the Americas. Uh, and together with my team, uh, we basically help meeting planners and incentive organizers here in the US plan and execute successful events. Um, big or small, uh, in our island city of Singapore. And I guess another key area of our work is also engaging and partnering industry associations like ICA, uh, PCMA, and MPI uh, to kind of raise the standards and ensure best practices uh, for the development of our meetings industry internationally. So That's great. Thank you so much. And, and I'm um, inviting everybody who is watching us live to please feel free to ask any questions as you have them for Gregory or just give us a shout out. In the meantime, if I gave you 60 seconds to give us a taste of Singapore, what would it be like? <laughs> well, 60 seconds is, is a very short time, but I'll try my best. So I guess if you're not familiar with Singapore, we're, we're affectionately known as the Little Red Dot, uh, a very small young island nation located in Asia. Uh, and we're surrounded by our neighbors of Indonesia and Malaysia. Uh, and we're very small in size, about 200 square miles. And for context, that's roughly about three and a half times the size of Washington, DC. That's about it. Um, you know, but I think despite our young age, having only achieved independence in 1965, uh, you know, if when you visit Singapore, you'll be greeted with a very modern, accessible, vibrant metropolis, a warm tropical weather, um, with a lot of nice experiences to discover. And we're also a well-known business, financial, and air hub in Asia, um, but also very multicultural uh, with an amazing food scene. So, so that's my favorite part of Singapore. Excellent. And everybody got a, a short taste in those 60 seconds. And you're leading me right into my first question. Um, because of its size, I, I assume that your nation always has to think outside of the box and you were always a leader in innovation. What are some of the key initiatives in, in the field of innovation, especially in events which Singapore came up with during the pandemic? Yeah, so I think especially during the pandemic, you know, it, it really caught us by surprise like everybody else, uh, you know, and, and you know, we had to shut our borders in about March, 2020. Uh, and, and just to give you some context, you know, the, the meeting and events industry for Singapore is, is very important. It's a, a very strong contributor. It contributes about 1% of our GDP and supports about more than 34,000 jobs uh, for, for our local, local population. Uh, and during the, C, uh, during the pandemic, you know, us, the CVB, we kind of really rallied together and we, we put together what we call the safe business events framework. Um, and we applied it to more than about 160 business events uh, and was part of our efforts to try and reopen our meetings industry in, in a phased manner. Yeah. Uh, we also worked hard and, and tried innovative ways to kind of host meetings uh, and introduce what we call MICE event pilots uh, and trial different kinds of like health protocols um, to kind of uh, host meetings safely. Uh, so these included like pre-event testing and zoning. Yeah, so I think a lot of other, you know, cities and destinations also did the same. Uh, but I guess what was more important and, and what really, really amazed me was, uh, I guess, uh, the resilience and innovation of the local industry. Um, you know, our, our convention centers, we have six of them. Um, they invested in new technology for hybrid events. Uh, you know, for example, Marina Bay Sands, uh, they in, uh, introduced a, a new state-of-the-art hybrid studio uh, with live streaming and hologram functionalities. So I, I've actually experienced that for myself. So quite, a, quite amazing. Uh, and on the incentive side, you know, our, our DMCs and tour operators, you know, because there was no international visitors, they, they took that break to kind of explore Singapore once again uh, and introduce new itineraries and tours, um, you know, that allowed travelers to kind of explore the same location, but in a very different perspective. 
Um, so one such tour was like um, this thing called Chinatown Murders, where it's an immersive mystery game tour, and you go around solving puzzles and you find a killer. Uh, all this while while kind of discovering, you know, the Chinatown heritage uh, in Singapore. Absolutely love it, but it's mind-boggling to have six venues centers in in such a small um, space. And, and all of them are doing really great work and, and hosting so many meetings. And we, we actually used in September of 2020, uh, the Marina Bay Sand Studio during our um, um, Association Expert Seminar, which was really cool. Great. And, and um, we had um, an audience which was in Singapore and our online audience as well. So that, that was uh, one of the first holograms we did even before our Congress. Um, later that year. Yeah. Everybody keeps on talking about sustainability. And these days, it's just more than a buzzword. It's, it's a must. But what takes, um, what is so different about Singapore's approach and how does this tie in with events? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I think unlike other countries, you know, with vast land and resources, um, Singapore is a, a city state with very scarce natural resources. You know, um, people and talent have often been referred to as our only resource in Singapore. Uh, hence, I think we have, you know, very long acknowledged sustainability as, as vital for our future. Uh, you know, and for us, you know, as a responsible global citizen, you know, we're, we're kind of guided by what we call the Singapore Green Plan 2030, uh, which the government la launched last year in 2021. Uh, and what that kind of plan does is it demonstrates Singapore's kind of commitment to the UN 2030 um, Sustainable Development Goals uh, and Paris Agreement. Uh, and, you know, really continues our journey as this whole city in nature um, idea. And fun fact, though, through careful kind of planning and urban development, uh, Singapore is now one of the world's densest, but also the greener cities. Um, you know, the green coverage in our, our island uh, has grown from about 36% in 1986 to almost half of our entire island today. Um, so, so more than a third of our island is actually covered by trees, and we plan to plant many other trees uh, and dedicate more land to, you know, natural resources. So it, it's, a, it's a very interesting and, and exciting time to be in Singapore. Yeah. And, and thank you, Monica, for uh, pasting in the link. To, to more information on that sustainability plan um, for uh, yeah. Singapore. Yeah, I, and, and I think, you know, I, I think coincidentally, and I swear it's not timed, uh, today in Singapore, we actually just launched the, the Singapore My Sustainability Roadmap. Uh, and it's a, a roadmap to become Asia Pacific's leading kind of sustainable mice destination by 2030. And our goal to also achieve net zero by 2050. Yeah, so oh, I think wow. this is quite a quite a you know a, a remarkable move for us, uh, and you know this roadmap will help to guide industries uh, in our meeting sector to help meet you know different types of uh, sustainability goals, uh, and I think one of the targets of the, the roadmap includes the mice industry achieving net zero emissions by twenty fifty, uh, and this is very in line with our our own national goal of achieving net zero greenhouse emissions by twenty fifty. And, and talking about the six uh, kind of convention centers that we have, uh, we also, you know, uh, have set targets for them to, you know, obtain internationally recognized um, sustainability certifications by 2050. So I think these are all very interesting and, and good targets that we have, you know, to set targets for us to reach in the next uh, decade. I would say very lofty targets and goals you want to achieve, but also um, a clear path. And I, I think you are on the route to achieving those. Uh, great job. And I, I see your colleague Jane also has put in a link to the sustainability roadmap. And yeah. congratulations. And we've timed our conversation very well today, <laughs> indeed. Um, you, you mentioned something um, just now talking about um, Singapore and, and the global um, perspective you have as, as a destination, as a nation, and, and your role and being the smallest but still the, with, with the greenest. 
as a North American representative, how do you see this approach resonating with, with the North American audience, with the meeting planners? Considering how large the U.S. is, do you see that in the U.S. people are looking at it differently, or is this something they are appealing and they, they you have their buying? Mm, I, I think it's it's very much the same. You know, no matter where we are, uh, which country, uh, it, it's very aligned to I guess the, the general kind of consumer's view of what sustainability and, and a, a general consciousness of what climate change is about. You know. I think here in the U.S., when I when I came up, you know, I, I was introduced to the term um, ESG, uh, which is stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. So this was very new to me. Um, but you know, attending different conferences was where I got a, a much better understanding about it. And and you know, if you kind of break it down, really, it's it's a lot about it. It's about be, doing social good uh, and, and sustainability. Um, so I, I think these are all very aligned uh, with what both you know Singapore is doing. The targets that we have set, uh, you know, and, and I think there's only one way to view sustainability and why we should do it, right? And, and that is to to kind of save our planet for our future generations. Uh, yeah. and, and for our own generation to <laughs> improve our lives, right? Yeah. Um, but, and and, and I'm being a European myself, when I first moved here, I also was confused about where is the difference between the <laughs> SDGs and the ESGs. I think it's it's the acronym too, which confuses everybody outside of the meetings industry, I guess. Indeed. What but, is the appetite of people in North America to meet in Singapore? Um, well, I guess I must admit that the trek from, from you know, the US to Singapore is a, it's a very long one. It's, it's quite a long flight. Um, but I feel that there is a strong business case uh, and draw for kind of American meetings and, and programs to Singapore. Uh, you know, some, again, a, a nice fun fact to throw in, you know, US is actually the largest uh, single country investor in Singapore uh, with direct investments over 244 billion. Uh, and US companies have invested more in Singapore than in all of uh, Asian countries combined. Uh, you know, so I think using Singapore as that global hub for American companies entry to Asia has also been a very uh, traditionally appealing one. Um, so. I think that the, also the, the fact that we're kind of kind of globally connected um, in Asia, uh, it's a very easy place to do business, uh, and our meetings infrastructure is also world class. Uh, helps uh, meeting planners to, to you know easily plan their meetings in Singapore, and, and of course, uh, I think that the location of Singapore, um, you know, being in the heart of Asia, you really have access to this the, the world's fastest growing region, which is Southeast Asia, six hundred and fifty million population. Um, so it's very easy for delegates if they want to fly to Singapore to have their meeting, uh, if you want to attract that captive audience. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know about that investment nugget of information you just shared. <laughs> that's, that's super interesting. And, and I can imagine then that brings also quite a lot of high profile business meetings where, where the, investors want to make sure that their investments are in safe hands, so to speak. <laughs> so we are coming to the end of our conversation. What bit would be the one thing you would like our um, listeners and viewers to leave with, to remember Singapore by? Um, I guess it's, it's more than just about Singapore. You know, I, I think today's topic was about sustainability. Uh, and I, I think, you know, a very crucial fact is that we should all take away that sustainability is, is no longer a fad, um, but a real requirement that we, we all need to work towards, you know. Uh, the time to, to act is now, uh, and sustainability should really be part of every organization's or, or meeting planners RFP and, and consideration. You know, ask your hotel, your venue, um, you know, destination, critical questions about what are their sustainability policies, uh, include it as, as a mandatory kind of component in your meeting requirements. Uh, it's, it's no longer just, I, I think, good business sense or an option. It's about the right thing to do. Uh, and everyone, including us in the meetings industry, um, should play their part. Yeah. Here, here, I couldn't have said it better. And, and uh, you guys at Singapore Convention Bureau have certainly been paving the way for people 
with uh, good resources and roadmaps. And, and we have a couple of links here already provided, but also there is more information available on your website, which is with visitsingapore.com forward slash mice forward slash en. Um, but before I let you go, I do want to, to know one last thing because we are on Hello America's What's Cooking. Any favorite foods, recipes, restaurants, recommendations? whether in San Francisco or or in Singapore? Well, that's a good question. So I, I just moved up to the Bay Area about uh, four months ago, so still pretty new, uh, but I've been happily exploring the area, you know, and, and the great restaurants it has. Uh, and I am personally like cooking, uh, so I, I've been enjoying going to the farmer's markets that, that are so abundant here in California. Uh, and I enjoy the one up in, in Marin County on Sundays. Uh, the produce is just so fresh, you know, and I, I go up there and pick my wheat, vegetables and, and meats and fruits, uh, and it's a happy place for me. Uh, but I, I guess a bit closer to home, uh, you know, some days I do feel a bit homesick uh, being up here alone. Uh, so I've been ordering from this place in the Bay Area called uh, Tapao Singapore. Uh, and, and Tapao literally means kind of like takeaway. So um, it's this Chef Emily kind of uh, started this virtual kitchen uh, during the pandemic uh, and she wanted to bring like Hawker Street food to, to kind of people here in the Bay Area. Uh, so she has dishes like chicken rice and laksa, uh, which are very authentic. Uh, and, and I must say, uh, does that truly bring a, a taste of home? So if you're ever in the Bay Area and, and want to try some Singaporean food, you can look her up. Yeah. Thank you so much. And for some strange reason, I have in my head that my guest last week, who's also in the Bay Area or in the LA area, was talking about the farmer's market. So there must be something really good in those farmer's markets. And one of these days, I'll have to do the, the uh, um, recipe book of, of our Hello America show. And uh, we are having a shout out here from my dear friend Sally. Great job to you both and happy holiday sustainability and of optimistic uh, together farm to table. Thank you, Sally, for, for being with us today. And um, we are at the end of our chat today. So for anybody who wants to join me as a guest, please feel free to email me at senior.ca.ecoworld.org. And uh, I only last um, one more piece of information for next week. Our guest will be Evan Babbins talking about uh, event experiences. And thank you so much, Gregory, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. It was my pleasure. Happy thank holidays, you. everybody. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.